Like what? I have to pay that I used to not have to pay to get the best player. Like, ha, bitch, tosh. like, what do you mean? Bish like, tosh. yeah, you know, the, the, the rich have to pay. And they're like, what? I have to pay now. I used to have to show up and give you fifth, you know, $5,000 to keep the lights on. Like now I got to give yeah. you a whole lot of money. And, you know, they don't like that stuff, but. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today, sitting in for my tag team partner. This has been a great week having the Cotton Man here, Captain for Life, Will Cotton. Will, how you doing today, buddy? Doing great. Listen. All right. On this Throwdown Thursday edition, we're going to talk about the SEC to the NIL rescue, maybe. The Big 12 goes shopping. The SEC flexes its muscles. We'll talk about the college basketball NBA draft hopefuls that said, nah, I'm good, and they're going to come back. So let's start off with Urban Meyer on NIL. Um, not a lot of regulation with NIL, and this has been a hot topic, and a lot of people have opinions on it, Will. And Urban Meyer just chimed in, and I uh, want to let you know what he said, and I quote, I'm not saying it all the way, but from my understanding, it's a fancy word for cheating. Urban Meyer said to Dan Dockage on his show, when I hear that that kind of word, I cringe right now. I hear the stories behind it. And if they're going to go to donors and boosters and ask for a lot of money, put it in a big pot and then decide who gets it, which I think is 1A of the rule of NIL. You can't do that. So collectives operate outside the university's purview, and though some states allow university officials, such as coaches in the athletic department, to endorse collectives, however, anyone currently employed by the university cannot financially contribute. So here's the kicker, uh, Will. Urban Meyer himself sits on the board of the foundation, an NIL collective founded to pay Ohio State football and basketball student-athletes as they use their name, image, and likeness to help promote worthy charitable causes. What do you think about Urban Meyer's thoughts on NIL, Will? I, one on, I think... <laughs> I don't think he's really connected to the foundation as he really think he is, because if he was saying what he was saying, they'd be like, well, aren't you bored of the foundation that actually <laughs> supports that? <laughs> so I think I think they got him as a name. And when people sit him down, they're like, this is really what you're what you're what you're doing. He's like, oh, uh, okay. I, I don't know about that. I, I, but also, I think I think, you know. Older coaches, I think they just don't like it. I think they can't hoard the talent. I think they can't go off their prestige. And they don't like, what, I have to pay that I used to not have to pay to get the best player? Like, ha, bitch, tosh. Like, what do you mean? Bish like, tosh. yeah, you know, the, the, the rich have to pay. And they're like, what, I have to pay now? I used to have to show up and give you fifth, you know, $5,000 to keep the lights on. Like, now I got to give yeah. you a whole lot of money. And, you know, they don't like that stuff. But, again... Let's not talk to Urban Meyer about his legalities, you know, <laughs> his, uh, you know, his integrity. So let it let I wouldn't I wouldn't talk about, you know, cheating or things like that. Uh, you know, right. Mr. Mr. Meyer. So other coaches have spoken out recently on NIL. Several prominent figures in college football, including Penn State coach James Franklin, have equated the current NIL landscape to the Wild West. There is a push among the college football elite spearheaded by Alabama coach Nick Saban to develop some sort of federal regulation for NIL. Saban and SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey are part of a convoy of university presidents and conference commissioners expected to head to Washington, D.C. to lobby for a more unified code on a national scale. So Saban to the rescue, Will. Alabama coach is going. Greg Sankey's going. There's going to be an SEC-hosted reception for lawmakers and congressional staffers on June 7th uh, before the SEC contingent meets individually with Congress members from states within the conference footprint on June 8th. This visit will mark the latest effort to uh, universally regulate NIL. Um, Will, what, what do you think about Nick Saban uh, leading the the charge to uh, wine and dine uh, congressional uh, members to create a national NIL law. What do you what do you think? Well, I think if we if we look back all of our shows of NIL, 
one of the biggest things I would ever say is policy. And there needs to be a structure. I think you agreed as well. That yes. There had to be sort of structure. Now, what troubles me is that the only people that are not included are the players. No. Now, how do you have a conversation of NIL when you don't even the people who benefit most of how do you not include them in that conversation? Um, I think it's a it's a, I think there it's a there's a I think the situation going on where it's not it's, they're not going to come up with a policy. They're going to try and make laws and rules and try and go back to the old way of the test. You know, of the, oh, they can only do this. and This is how we do it. And da, 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 da. And, you know, it won't, it, you know, won't fly, you know, it won't fly because it's not genuine. It's not a real conversation. It's really, we need to come up with some rules that you have to follow. Not like, okay, let's come up with something because, you know, let's figure out how we're going to do this to, to, to maintain Alabama getting the best players at the end of the day. Um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 you know, it, and it's unfortunate, you know, because I think they're going the right way, getting a policy and a framework that allow it to, sustain this nil what's going on you know make a sustainability but you're not including the people who actually benefit it you know it's so it's it's kind of backwards and um you know i don't think it's going to work i don't think people are going to be they're going to be a lot of lawsuits or anything because again they're not including the students all right well uh fans uh many long time Viewers know that I am a history teacher by trade. That is my life's work. And I want to give you a little bit of information on the Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation served as the written document that established the functions of the national government after it declared its independence from Great Britain. And it didn't work very well for a number of reasons. But for our purposes, we will mention that Congress commanded little respect and no support from state government. So let's just change Congress to the NCAA. They have very little respect. Uh, they're not well liked, and nobody's really listening to them. So under the articles, Congress couldn't raise funds, regulate trade, or conduct foreign policy without voluntary agreements from the states. Well, Will, let's just change that to NIL. States are kind of doing its own thing. Sound familiar, historians? The Constitution works in theory, air quotes for those on the uh, audio side, due to shared power, the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. So as Will said, all I can say is good luck with that, because this is like picking a fight and watching somebody else fight it, because Nick Saban's 71. He ain't going to be around for his long term. But these other coaches are going to be available and around. So, hey. Good luck with that. Will, any final thoughts before we transition to segment two? Uh, same thing. <laughs> <It's really> not, <laughs> I mean, again, you're going to let a 71-year-old person figure out today's <laughs> issues uh, that even he really doesn't have a value. He's like, man, what? Like 10 years from here, I might not even be here. And we don't even know if we're still working on this. So it's, it's I mean, it's <sighs> welcome to America. I'm going to let that go politically speaking because uh, somebody is, uh, uh, is he 80 already or anyway. So <laughs> fans, in segment two, the Big 12 is going shopping and the SEC is flexing its muscle. We'll be right back to talk about those items on the iCoaches podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Project's close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast and in segment two, the Big 12 is going shopping. 
Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormick reaffirmed that the conference has interest in expansion, and it was highlighted by a plan by League Brass to identify and evaluate potential members. <laughs> As he said all along, he wants the Big 12 to be a national conference going coast to coast, and it has been reported that Colorado is engaged in substantive conversations, and we've spoken about that uh, over the uh, last several months. Um, the Buffs make up one of the so-called four corner schools, which goes with Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, and they are dead in the eyes of the Big 12. Uh, of course, the Pac-12 has yet to sign a new television contract. In addition, Basketball powers, Gonzaga and UConn. Hey, UConn, didn't we try this with the American Conference? I digress. Um, they're also being looked at. So you have to remember, Will, that the Big 12 also announced publicly it distributed approximately $440 million in revenue from the 2021-2022 fiscal year, which is good enough for $44 million per school and that's still ranked third among FBS conferences trailing the SEC and the Big Ten. What are your thoughts on the Big 12 going shopping for schools, Will, openly? They're just trying to keep they're trying to keep up. They're trying to keep up. They know ain't nobody want to play there. They know once Texas and Ohio want well, Texas Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma leave. I mean, there's really no Big 12. I mean, there's really no. What big are you talking club. about? They've got 14 schools. They've got BYU. They got UCF. That, that's a they lot. They got of, Houston, I think, coming in. Texas is 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 half of those, just because of viewership. Is is people who are going to watch? You know, I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to watch. You know, if it's three o'clock, am I going to choose between you know, uh, TCU and Kansas State or Texas and Oklahoma? I mean, I don't care what the ranks are. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what the ranking is. But, you know, it, it, they're trying to flex their muscle, but I don't think they have too much because sustainably, I'm talking about year after year after year after year after year, if you lose your blue bloods, it's hard for you to be a good, viable like conference. Well, the TV contract helps, and that's why the Pac-12 is having issues now because they're looking at Amazon and all these streaming services. And the Big 12, is looking to be in four TV time slots, similar yeah. to other conferences. So they can do 12, 3, 30, 7, and 10, 30 with their conference. Man, that, that makes it viable where the Pac-12 tends to only have two slots. So, yeah. uh, all right. Well, the SEC is putting its foot down, kind of. The SEC plans to increase fines for fans rushing the field or storming the court following the games uh, underneath announced new guidelines from last week. The first offense will cost the home school $100,000. The second offense will cost $250,000 and $500,000 for each subsequent events. Uh, how much money are the schools getting uh, each year? <laughs> I don't know. If that's a deterrent, Will. Right. Um, they also want to beef up security so uh, fans uh, are deterred from trying to run onto the field. Greg Sankey said in the statement that current conference policies need to be reviewed and improved with the focus on addressing field and court incursions by spectators after contests. Uh, good luck with that. What do you think, Will? <laughs> That's unfortunate because it should, it, should, it should be stopped. I mean, having kids run on the field Field is 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 dangerous, dangerous. Is. You know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you know you you have a ton of people. You have no, you can't handle all these people. Can't manage it. There's not enough police so for for not police, and they're all drunk. So you know it's it's just not safe. You know, I mean, what I mean, we've seen guys who you know slap women and all kinds of stuff going on in, in, in when that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it'll have to be something where it's going to be a hard penalty on I think individuals. I think mm -hmm. if you individual, I mean, it can't just be just, you know, the, 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 the school, I think it's like strictly like, Hey, you jump on the $500, $1,000. So you, you need to go after the individual. If, if you can, turn. if you can, because I mean, it, I mean, you, you seen what happens, big play, these kids just pull into Whoosh. the thing. You can't even, you know, you can't control it. And that's just, you know, 
it just has to be, I don't know. I, I you know, it, it, obviously they're making a good idea with policy and trying to come up with a different way of doing things and figuring out the security and keeping people safe. But I mean, yeah, you have to stop it now. You have to start people like the first game you, you go right on the, on the, on the mic. You say, we don't do this. This is not what we do. If you do, this will happen to you. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, it's yeah, go be- after people's scholarships and go after people's admissions. That'll stop you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're seen on the field, yes. we will go to your financial whatever. And yes. Yeah, that will stop. Yep. Yeah, okay. You will be able to review. Then I got to explain that to mama. <laughs> yep, we, re- we reviewed all the video. We saw you on the field. And then we will have, you know, we'll talk to you about your scholarship. Or we'll talk yeah. to you or your admission. Your you admission. Know, we, yeah, and, 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 but, and but maybe even make it part of the admission packet when you sign and say you're going yes. to go here as a student say you will not adhere to the policies of the stadiums <laughs> which are not allowed well we'll say you will not run on this st- on the field for any reason you won't yes. unless there was a, a, an emergency but other than that yeah and then put it yeah. there so we need compliance <laughs> do you yep. see fans uh yep. dr adams the administrator comes out i mean do the writing I mean, <laughs> you have to do t- I mean, even stuff, because if, even even when I even when I started school, I mean, I would get emails. I mean, this obviously this is back in like 2004. I was getting emails that were a video of like, this is what this is. And this is where you go. There should be a video that you have to watch a series of compliance. Part of that will be stadium stadium safety. Yeah. And then you watch that video. And once you watch it, it'll go record into the the, the console and people will say, John Smith saw the video, signed the paper that he would not run the field. If he does, you can take his admission, take his scholarship immediately. No end of the semester kind of stuff. So, I mean, you yeah. have to start stuff now. And but that'll probably what I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I, I understand it. It's a part of the college experience, so to speak. But, you know, as a coach who every time we lost, the court was stormed. Uh, safety and security are number one priorities. And yeah, uh, I got I punched will... in. The, I got punched in. The, I got punched in the face when we beat Magruder <laughs> to go to the state. Yeah, somebody, so... somebody punched me in the face. Anyway. And yep. that joke, yeah. yeah. So we don't, we don't want this. So let's be safe, fans. And now we're gonna run. We're gonna continue on. The SEC runs this mother. Uh, the SEC won't be doing a nine-game conference schedule uh, because they're not getting paid for it. If you're not gonna pay me for the ninth game. I'm going to do eight and let you be mad because by doing eight games, it increases the amount of bowl eligible teams, which means we make more money as a conference and you can't beat us. So I could care less uh, that somebody's mad that we're not playing a nine game schedule. You pay me for the ninth game and we'll do it. And here's the quote uh, among them, a desire for more revenue in addition for the additional conference game. So if you're not paying for it, we're not doing it. How do you feel about the SEC, Will, saying, no, nah, we're good with eight, no more of the divisions, we'll keep our little dinky rivals or whatever, and we're just coming after you. Why do they even stay part of the NCAA? Why don't <laughs> they just break off and do their own thing? Like, they, they don't gonna do it. <laughs> they don't care. They don't, I mean, they might as well be the SEC and it'd be like live. You might as well just do your own thing. Like, you know, and people would people would probably jump on it. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I guess they're just testing them. They're just like, look, no, we're not doing that. No. And they're just like, oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, all right. All right I, I guess. And they're just like, or what are you going to do? So, I mean, why even be part of it? Why even be part of it and have your own rules and do your own thing? I mean, at this point, you can, you can sustain yourself. And run your own self, and people you have, and you have enough viewership that people are going to support you. So it's not like, hey, you're still playing, right? For Florida, you're still playing for Alabama. <laughs> I'm, I'll watch. I don't care. So it's just, you know, they they flex they they flex unnecessarily, which is, you know, I, I don't know, man, but not <laughs> gonna do it. Yeah, they, and, and so what? You're mad. Big yeah, deal. who cares? Pay me. So in the next contract, they're gonna make more money, and there's your ninth game. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they'll figure they'll figure out to do something, but it's just it's just funny how they just scoff at the NCAA. They flexed on you yeah, and said, just, "What? What are you gonna yeah. do? Are you gonna yell at me?" Okay. All right, fans. When we come back on segment three, we're gonna talk about who's smart enough not to go to the NBA 
Uh, how exciting college basketball is going to be next year. We'll be right back on the Our Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Father and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. We're going to talk about who is coming back. So the deadline to withdraw player names from the NBA draft has come and gone, and we're talking about who's staying. So fans, mark this show because we're going to make you a little money if you're in it strictly for entertainment purposes only. So FAU, Florida Atlantic, brings back all five starters from their Final Four team. Um, And with all five starters coming back from a 35-14, and they're going to move to the American Athletic Conference. Uh, I think they're going to have a chance to win the AAC in its first year because those dudes can play and they're a year older. Will, what do you think about FAU? You're going to pay more attention to them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. NIL keeps kids in school so that games like, you know, it gets a little better. So Man, I'm down no, to watch no need to rush to be at the bottom of the bench. If you even make the league at all. Right. There hey. you go. <laughs> all right. Purdue. Zach Eady is coming back and that's great for college basketball. Because now Purdue is relevant again, and hopefully they get better guards. Okay, so he is the reigning, defending national player of the year. And that loss to Fairleigh Dickinson would bug me, too. I can't have that be my last game in college basketball. So what do you think about Zachary coming back for Purdue? What does that do for the Boilermakers? Uh, it makes it exciting, you know, and you ever have a seven footer out there, man. It's always watched, especially in college. I mean, he ain't that like super great or nothing like that. Yeah. I love him. I love he, I love he, watching him play. Oh, yeah. I like him. He, you know, he, he he runs. He don't fall over. He's tall. He, he don't foul. Yeah. He's a big know. man. But, you know, my love affair for the post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, dying it, breed, dying it, breed. It's a good story. I mean, it's a good story. And when you want to, you know, when you want to get hyped about the about the season and say, well, we came back and we're, we're, we're ready. And now we're not coming back for blood and revenge. And it sounds good. Good sound bite. So good yeah, for that. Just win a game in the tournament. OK, guards right. throw it to the big and then get it back out. <laughs> get some, get All some right. So solve, solve that one. That was that. I've solved your problems already. Throw to the monster and right. let the monster help you. Send the All check. Right. Send the check. <laughs> Michigan State, one of my favorite football teams, <laughs> Mel Tucker. I'll sign that contract right now. I'm not leaving. Anyway, we're talking about Tom Izzo. Uh, Tom Izzo got two good players back. A.J. Hoggard and Jaden uh, Akins have withdrawn from the uh, NBA draft, and the Spartans are on track to return five of their top six scores while adding a quality freshman class. Keep an eye on Michigan State. What do you think about Michigan State, Will? Always a team that you should be uh, looking at, man. They're always coached well. They're always disciplined. Uh, They never have, like, issue players, you know, with always stuff like that. So consistency, man. So watch them. But, you know, I think they're always something to watch. Yeah. Creighton. Uh, Creighton has had a strange offseason. It looked like all five starters would return. Then Ryan Nimhard and Arthur Kaluma into the transfer portal while Trey Alexander and Ryan Kalkbrenner explored the NBA draft. And now Alexander and Kalkbrenner are back 
and they also added a solid transfer class, so they're ready to contend for a Big East title. Will, what do you think about Creighton? Did you watch any of them this year? Because they, they have a nice little run, but they do bring back some talent next year. Yeah, I'll watch them. You know, they're in the Big East, so they're going to watch St. John's, so I'll probably watch at least two of them. <laughs> at least at two least, of them. At least two of them, at least. But, uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Illinois, Terrence Shannon and Coleman Hawkins were ranked 45 and 53 respectively in the NBA draft prospect range. They looked at the math and said, I think we'll come back and see if we can do better. So now Illinois has a better team, but will something's going on in the Big Ten because once we hit tourney time, those teams the last couple of years have had some issues. So uh, we got to keep an eye on that in terms of Big Ten basketball during the regular season versus Big Ten basketball in the postseason. Any thoughts on Illinois or the Big Ten in general? Man, I'm really just liking a lot of guys coming back to school, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, it gives them a chance. There's a little like school pride and things like that. Um, Again, Illinois I don't think they really got it, but it's good for the for for the school and the, and the and the kids. I mean, that's hype. Like you know, hey, our best players are coming back. All right, let's go. Yeah. You know, I don't know how viable it is because you know, but that's Illinois. <laughs> All right. And then finally, Alabama. Alabama needed some good news because they did not finish the season with any good news. Okay? But Mark Sears and Javon Quinley. They're coming back. Both withdrew from the NBA draft and are returning to anchor a group that lost some really good players uh, that earned their first number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, Any thoughts on Alabama before we close, sir? They won't be number one, but at least they can get away from that ugly, ugly season. You know, things are going on, uh, happened with the legal issues. So they can get back back to play basketball. And, you know, I mean, then the SEC, I mean, really – I don't see a reason why they couldn't sustain it. I mean, there's only only a couple teams like what Tennessee and uh, I think that's it. That's really oh, like out there. Kentucky. Man. Oh, Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky Auburn. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Auburn. Too. Yeah, Texas A and M. And Chris there, Beard man. is at Ole Miss now. Um, Beard is at Ole Miss, and then in two years, Ole Miss and Texas is gonna play everybody every year. So that's gonna be a new rivalry because. Uh, Chris Maybe Beard tough. didn't think he should have been fired. So SEC is going to have some storylines yeah. that we need to follow. Yeah. Maybe All right. Tough. So before we leave, fans, we're going to give you some advice, young players. As you see, we've got some players coming back. Uh, and as a result of those players coming back in a transfer portal, sometimes the high school players don't get what they think they should get. The COVID extra year will end, I believe, this year. Should have very few issues with that. But keep working on your craft. Keep honing your craft. And then get in where you fit in. And then be happy. So that's always going to be Coach Adams saying, go where you fit. Go where they want you. and then maybe you can uh, have a little longevity with this. Uh, But on behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Francis and my captain for life, who's heard me say that for over 20-some years now. Right. (laughs) And it works. Uh, Will Cotton, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the iCoaches podcast, and we'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. Peace. The iCoaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA SAVE Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. 
news. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.